Hey everyone, um, this is Saturdays are for the boy. Um, this week I'm getting back. Um, I am going to give you picks for the five games I'm most interested in in week zero slash one of the 2019 college football season. It's finally here, baby. Finally here. All right. Um, here we go. I'm just going to uh, say the game, a little bit about what I think is going to happen, and final score, five games that I'm most interested in, the end. Um, I'll kind of keep a tally of how I'm doing over the course of the year um, in terms of record. Uh, I also did my top 25 a couple days ago. I'm going to see how well I do compared to the AP poll. Um, and see what it looks like. Anyways, uh, onto the games. I'm doing this now instead of uh, later because one of my top five games is this week zero game, kickoff game Miami versus Florida in Orlando, 150th anniversary big celebration event for college football. Um, two in-state rivals that don't play a ton, which makes it a lot of fun. A lot of intrigue, a lot of question marks around both teams. Um, Manny Diaz, a brand new head coach, first time head coach at the U. This is where he's supposed to be. This feels right for him. Um, the question is, does he have a quarterback? Jaron Williams is the guy that he picked um, as the starter, first year starter, first time starting, going against probably the best secondary he'll see all year in the Florida Gators and Marco Wilson and company. Um, that is not a recipe for success to me. Uh, I can't see Jaron Williams having a very successful game. On the flip side, we all know Florida's biggest question mark is the offensive line, four new starters. The unquestioned strength of the Miami defense is the front seven, especially those linebackers, that trio of linebackers led by Shaq Quarterman might be the best in the country. Um, so that's going to be a great matchup to watch on that side of the ball. Um, Felipe Franks is a much better, much more proven quarterback than Jaron Williams. Dan Mullen is a much better, much more proven head coach than Manny Diaz. Diaz might have this team rolling a little bit by the end of the year, but week one, game one, going against a shutdown secondary and a guy who is going to lead Felipe Franks to a heck of a year. Um, the second best quarterback in the SEC, I think, by the end of the year, ahead of Jake Fromm and only behind Tua. Give me the Florida Gators 34 to 17 over Miami in game one. Game two I've got on the docket is a huge rivalry game. One of the most underrated, biggest, nastiest rivalry games in the country. That's the Holy War. Utah versus BYU opening Thursday night. Um, Utah has high expectations for this year. I expect a bounce back here for BYU. Um, a team that could be a fringe ranked team if all the if all the breaks break right for them. But here's the thing: Utah's defensive line, the best in the Pac-12. I think it's probably the second best in the country behind Auburn's, maybe even the best. Um, one of the two best for sure. Kalani Sataki, BYU, ground and pound, tough physical football that plays right into Utah's hands. Utah has better skill right there at the front line on defense. They'll be able to stuff BYU. I'm not sure BYU has the downfield threats to stretch the field, to make plays on offense, to do much on offense. On the flip side of the field, Utah has maybe its most explosive offense since the Alex Smith urban Meyer days of 04, 05 in that, in that range um, with Tyler Huntley, Zach Moss, um, a decent, a decent cadre of weapons on the outside. Utah is my pick to win the Pac-12. That means I've got to have them starting off with a win. I think BYU's strengths play into Utah's strengths. Utah's strengths are just better. Give me Utah winning 27 to 14 in this first game, in this holy war. This game I'm super excited. Late night, Thursday night. Way to kick off the season, guys. All right, game number three that I'm excited for. This one's a little bit under the radar as well. It's the Battle of the Nerds. It's Northwestern and Stanford. Um, they played a few years ago in Evanston, the infamous body clock game where Northwestern won um, a sleepy noon game in uh, Northwestern. Uh, so, you know, what, 10 a.m. Stanford time. 
I just the return leg of this game. Um, this game's really interesting to me because these are two programs that to me are going in opposite directions. Stanford is to me at its lowest point it's been um, since the early Jim Harbaugh days. Northwestern is at its peak in its history, winning the Big Ten West for the first time in its uh, program history, winning 10 games. Um, Pat Fitzgerald has the baseline level at Northwestern at seven and five, eight and four. Stanford, to me, this year is a seven and five, eight and four th- team. The thing is, Northwestern has probably Hunter Johnson at quarterback. That hasn't been confirmed yet. But Patty Fisher at linebacker is a great player. Um, Bowser at running back is a very good player. I think the surrounding pieces at Northwestern right now are actually just better than Stanford's. Um, this will not be a aesthetically pretty pleasing game to watch. I don't even know if either of these teams end up ranked. I don't have either of these teams end up being ranked, but I think it's a really intriguing, interesting uh, week one matchup that I'm going to give the edge to um, Northwestern. Actually, I'm going to have them winning. um, Let's say uh, 31 to 21, something in that range. Um, I just don't think Stanford's that good this year. All right. Game number four game of the week without a doubt is Auburn, Oregon. Uh, This one, I believe, is being played in Jerry World in Dallas. Um, Headline game, game day will be there. Um, It's got all the makings of a huge early season game that's going to tell us something about these teams. Um, For Auburn, what is Bo Nix all about? True freshman starting quarterback? Let's see what what, what he can do for Oregon. Um, Can that offensive line, it's being highly touted. Shane Lemieux has gotten a lot of preseason All-American accolades. Um, Can they hold up against Auburn, one of the two best defensive lines in the country, led by Derrick Brown, who would have been a top 10 pick had he come out this past year. He decided to come back to school. Um, Yeah, this is a battle of heavyweights. Um, Here's where the difference is in this game. I mentioned him already. It's Bo Nix. Both these teams are extremely talented all over the field. There's one position where there's a glaring advantage for one team, and that's quarterback. Oregon has Justin Herbert. He might be the number one pick in the NFL draft. He's the best quarterback not named Trevor or Tua in the country this year. Um, Auburn has just Bo Nix, true freshman, thrown into the fire against a preseason top 10 team, top 11 team, whatever they are. Um, I think he ends up making that critical mistake. It's a tight, contested game. Great game to watch. Um, going down close in the fourth quarter. Pressure's on. Bo Nix makes that freshman error. Throws the ball somewhere else um, to Oregon. Holds onto it too long and somebody gets to him. Strip sack type of thing. Troy Dye is roaming around. Um, the number one defensive line recruit in the country, Kayvon Thibodeau, is now at Oregon. Maybe he makes a play, true freshman on true freshman violence. Um, give me Oregon 27-20 to 20 in a great game where one critical mistake ends it for the Tigers. And then my final game that I'm really interested in, this is probably going to be the most fun from a fireworks standpoint game of the week, and that's uh, Oklahoma-Houston. Um, We all remember what happened a few years ago. Houston, highly ranked going into the season. They had beaten Florida State the year before. Lots of of hype about them. They get Oklahoma to start the year. What are they made of? They're playing Oklahoma. They go out and just beat them soundly. There wasn't really a question. Houston was the better team on that day. Now we get the rematch. Houston's not as good as they were back then. Oklahoma's probably better than they were then. Jalen Hurts comes in after Baker Mayfield and Kyler Murray, back-to-back Heisman winners, back-to-back number one picks. I don't think he has that in him, but he is a proven winner, a proven um, game player at quarterback. Houston has one of the most exciting quarterbacks in the country in Derek King as well. Um, But the supporting cast, Ed Oliver, is gone. Um, Pretty much every name from those great Houston teams are gone. Greg Ward. Although Derek King is probably as good, if not better, than Greg Ward will be. 
um, at least as exciting. Oklahoma's defense, who the hell knows what's going to happen with them. Alex Grinch is a great coordinator, but I don't expect them to improve like that, which means Houston will score. Dana Holgerson's very familiar with Oklahoma, took them down to the wire last year with West Virginia. So he'll be able to score. He'll be able to game plan for Oklahoma. Um, in the end, talent wins out in this game. Give me Oklahoma 45, Houston 31. So um, just to recap, I've got Florida over Miami. I've got Utah over BYU, Northwestern over Stanford, Oregon over Auburn, and um, Oklahoma over Houston. In the five games I'm most excited about for week zero, week one, I'm just real excited to get this season started. Um, unfortunately, I will be in Europe these first couple weeks. Um, excited about the vacation, not excited. I'm going to um, just be catching some highlights on YouTube here and there um, for the first couple weeks. But uh, it's back, baby. It's legitimately back. Let's go. Um, if you end up finding me, awesome. This is just my place to vent, to say how much I love this sport and to give a little bit of my thoughts about it. Um, very amateur. Um, I'm not trying to do anything but this amateur little thing. I just want to be able to say these things and have a record of them um, because it's just a lot of fun for me. Anyways. Thank you so much. This has been Saturdays for the Boy.